My name is Raymond. I am the director for Countrywise Communication. Countrywise Communication is a multimedia corporate organization that is into uh, promoting rural development through the use of video productions, translating video content into local languages, and going to communities to show videos to rural people, most especially farmers, in an attempt to help them understand agricultural messages or health-related messages. We, in the year 2012, had a partnership with the Savannah Agri Research Institute. Our mandate was to produce uh, agricultural videos and translate into local languages. Having been uh, having successfully produced the videos in 2012 and translated them, we came to realize that there was a challenge of trying to get videos to farmers living in remote areas. So we came up with an innovative idea by trying to fabricate a tricycle into a, a video screening equipment. So by so doing, we uh, we covered the, the, the back of the tricycle and then we got a carpenter to create compartments in the tricycle where we are able to go to communities uh, carrying along with carrying along DVDs. So the carpenter creates a compartment and the compartment is able to carry a DVD deck, a projector and all the screening gadgets that you can think of, including a genset. And so we are able to move from one community to another with, with a tricycle to, to show these uh, videos. So we have screening officers that uh, ride the tricycles with the videos, and then they go to the community. They get there very early enough. They interact with community members, and then they do the community entering through the, the chiefs or opinion leaders. And then later in the night, they are given a, a venue where they, they go to, to play the videos. And so the community members uh, come out in their numbers and then they watch the videos in their own uh, local language. Yeah. My name is Duncan Soans. I'm part of Cabby's delivery team here in Ghana, working on a project which is called Gender and the Legume Alliance, uh, which is trying to encourage people to grow soybean profitably. We wanted to find a project that would support the sustainable development of agriculture in the region. And soybean is a really important crop here. It has two really important qualities. One, it has a high protein content, which is good for uh, family uh, nutrients, nutrition, but also good for fodder for animals. So it was an important crop in that respect. And secondly, uh, there's a very special quality about soybean, which is that it's able to fix nitrogen from the air. That means that when you've grown soybean, your soil is improved. We think it's about the equivalent of, put, of ending up with a 50 kilogram bag of urea on your acre plot. And there's a big problem in Ghana, that the soils here are all getting depleted. Every year people are carrying out agriculture, they're taking their crops away, but they're putting very little back into their fields. So this is a way that we can, uh, this is a crop that can actually help to restore some of the quality of the soil here in, in Ghana. But in addition, we're working on three inputs. The first input is called inoculant, rhizobium inoculant. And the big brand here is called Sarifix. The reason it's called Sarifix is because it's made in the region by Sari, that uh, many people will be aware of, the, the Agricultural Research Institute in the region. And uh, like I say, it's a, what, they, what they're producing is a naturally occurring product, but, but the legumes that are being grown here, like soybean, has not been grown here long enough for the rhizobia to build up in the soil. So by buying this quite cheap pack of, of inoculant, you can coat the soil and that will improve the quality of the yield by up to 40% more yield and, and with soybean uh, getting something like uh, 12 I think CDs a kilo at the moment a 40% increase in yield is significant um, but it also leaves this nitrogen behind so you get it like a free bag of nitrogen uh, free bag of urea into your soil as well so that's our first partner is Sari the second partner 
uh, in terms of infrastructure is the partner that's getting these um, inputs out into the region. And so for that, we're working with a company called Green F, and they are working with the um, uh, agro dealerships around the region. And there's about 70 agro dealerships that are taken seriously in the upper, upper east, upper west and northern regions. And those are uh, the guys that are stocking the products that we're recommending. And that means that when the farmers go to see the agro dealers, they'll know about the products, they'll have them available and they'll be able to buy them. Um, so that's, that's, our, that's our supply chain, if you like, getting sorted out. So then we need to align information with the supply of uh, the agricultural inputs. And so in terms of that, our partnership has to extend to people who can provide media services. And core to all of this are going to be about 240 village-based screenings. And those are showing films that have been produced by uh, a company based here in Tamale, which is called Countrywide Communications. And they've made a film for us, which is uh, six sections, I think, of an introduction through to post-harvest, explaining every element of the technologies along the way so that families can understand better um, the technologies that we're thinking about. And like I say, these, that what happens is that uh, the driver uh, takes a tricycle, drives into the village, sets up a generator, sets up a screen, and uh, gets ready to show the, the film to the, to the local village farmer. It's fabricated with all these compartments. And uh, inside here, as you can see, these are equipments that are set in here for uh, video shows in rural communities. Inside here, you have uh, a loudspeaker. This is uh, a speaker with a power arm profile in it that uh, can uh, that is loud enough to show videos. Here you have your DVD deck. So this is a DVD deck here. As you can see it. As you can see, it. then we have our generator here. We have uh, reached not less than uh, 30,000 farmers with, with it. We have reached not less than 30,000 farmers because we we'll go to do village screenings and most of the times you go to communities and the video show that we take to the community serve as a source of entertainment as well because we are talking about communities where you don't have electricity we are talking about communities where you cannot have internet connection in some cases no even mobile phone connections but the tricycle is able to find its way to get into these communities so it is always good news for community members to hear that we are in the community to to show videos and then they usually will come out in their numbers and so in each community we are talking about reaching farmers not less than 300 averagely we are looking about 300 to 400 and sometimes the numbers go as much as to 600 and so we have been to over 600 communities, maybe close to a thousand communities. And if you want to run the figure, you see that it's, it's, it's really a huge, uh, we've really reached huge numbers since 2012. <laughs> Video ma puni tingare tisha dito tito tima dito tito ni tisha kaza mbere video ma kariyero kule so kariyero kule ai berle so ka ai nanti manu dene berle dene ame nanti manu cha do kuto manta la so tima zangu se bere dumbra ma. Ne, 
Usually we get about 300 people attending each screening and, and about half of those will be children who are school age and the rest will be made up of, of people from the uh, farming families, uh, adults from the farming families. And it's the first time that we've carried out any sort of event where we've had more men than women attending. If you run a demo plot, they're really great, they're really valuable, but actually more men than women tend to, attend, tend to come to the demo plots. The reason women are able to come to the screenings is because of the timing. They're screened at night, after the chores are finished, after the evening meal has been completed, and after the evening prayers have been completed, which is important this time of year, with Ramadan at the moment. So we have to make sure all of those things are completed. So we negotiate on a village by village basis what time the film is going to be shown. And we start off by playing a few music videos and that gets people interested and gradually the young people arrive and then the, the adults arrive. Uh, and they stay for the screenings and at the end of the screening, the screening officer will go through some questions and answers with them. And normally we have a, a screening which lasts for about 45 minutes and then questions and answers that go on for up to 75 minutes afterwards because people are really keen to find out about the technologies. If you look at our video screening models, before we start the main agricultural training videos in the community, we usually start by playing music. And for us not to go to communities and just play any other music, it is our intention to look at some kind of edutainment, education entertainment, where we begin to get musicians, support them with some budgets, and then give them the acrylic message that uh, we want to go and show. Then they can produce a song with the message. So we go to the community, and before the main video starts, we will play the the song which is also a music with its lyrics written to 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 support agriculture so that was how come you saw that video we started a pilot with struggle boys uh, because we got this project to work with kabi and as part of our mandate working with kabi we are supposed to implement the project so implementing the project means that we have to go and show videos on uh, soya beans in rural areas so we decided to take the the script the script of the training video gave it to chogo boys and we said well we want you guys to look at this script and produce a song from it so it is good music you listen to it it's contemporary music but the message is now talking about how to produce soya beans Dizel pam na nan kulum anam gwa ngone kana yi bare kala jale na kabili tim bam bo shale inoculation tu bo le bala avata shuru wala kar gabra de yel bone sarifix dan gabra sham mim bonoma to ma bam bra kilogram bina nu anam bam bele pure sa mi tim jirgu de ba yob ka chan pa gaba dende gab mele ve yela ka de sa ma to te tabane so the message is talking about soya bean production but then it is a contemporary music that you can listen to you can enjoy you can dance but you will also pick a message that is on how to produce soya beans 
so it's a new module and it's something that countrywise is going to to adapt in its uh, uh, community outreach programs so um we will have gone through each of the stages of what they need to do we'll explain to them how and where they can get uh, inputs and that's the that's the start of the campaign of information in addition to that we've produced uh, about uh, 20,000 leaflets this year which have been distributed through the farming households and through the agro dealers um, we're also uh, at the at the screening events we're also uh, collecting telephone contact details for the farmers so that we can follow up with them and remind them to go and buy the inputs we can send them an SMS and Green F is is responsible for sending out the SMS's to say now's the time to come and get your farm inputs Green F is also doing some radio work uh, there will be some radio spots across the regions uh, and uh, our colleagues at Sari are committed to, I think to do 22 radio interviews explaining the technology to farmers across the region now that's quite tricky in a region like northern Ghana because um, there are so many languages here we've done a very similar campaign in Tanzania and we had one language Kiswahili was worked for the whole country it was the national language here we have a rule that any of the work which is audio uh, voice based is is produced in the local language the print we produce in English regards to the number of communities that we have gone so far we did all that with just one tricycle now we have added on we have about four but the vision is that in future we should have tricycles positioned in every district within the trade regions so we want to be the center of dissemination but then how are you able to send the information down to the other group of people that might not have the opportunity to have TV stations. So any content that is put on the TV station targeting the rural, the, the urban uh, folks, we will also adapt that message or that information, translate it into the local languages, and we will go down to educate the, the, the rural folks. Because if you look at the, 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 the people in the urban uh, centers, most were migrated from the rural areas so why don't we begin to to give them the relevant information that they need even as they are still very young and are in their rural areas because in no time they will be migrating to the city centers so our target or our goal is to send enough education to the rural people all across the trade regions for now we may want to extend that to uh, other parts of the region but for now our concentration is looking at the trade regions that we can position the tricycles in each district and every information that is shown on national tv we can also pick that information put it in local languages and also help the local people have that kind of information now obviously farmers will have lots of things that they want to spend their money on. They'll want to spend money on uh, things to improve their kids' education, they'll want, to, they'll want to improve their farmsteads, but we hope that they will continue to take responsibility for reinvesting in their soil and their farms. They'll continue to buy better seed, they'll continue to uh, add fertilizer when they can, and they'll see the benefit of that. The levels of production and productivity in Africa are very, very low by world standards. And that's largely because very few inputs are put back in. Um, uh, information is part of that, and so this information campaign is important. In 2017, we saw about 30,000 people at our screenings. 2018, we'll see 100,000 people. We hope that we can put a package of, of resources together that will mean that these screenings can continue to happen over the next four or five years because it's important that these messages are repeated. Too often we think if we tell somebody once, they, you know, everything is going to change. And that doesn't happen. We have to repeat the messages, we have to keep those messages consistent and we have to keep working on those. So I hope that we would see some um, impact in terms of the um, prosperity of the farmers and if we started to do soil tests, we would see that, that more nutrients went back into the soil and the soil was, was, was working harder for the farmers because it's been, it's, it's been looked after. If farmers look after their soil, it'll look after them. And those are some of the changes that we should see. 
We would probably also expect to see uh, less importing of soybean from, from outside of the country, which is good for the country's balance of, our, of payments. And we also know that under this one factory, one district, one factory uh, development, a number of soybean processing units are being developed up in the northern region. So we would expect to see a, a much stronger ecology of markets. We, we, we talked at the beginning about the input markets, but actually we would also expect to see a much stronger relationship between farming communities and output markets and off-takers and growers and processors uh, turning soybean into the whole raft of things that it can be used for, for human health uh, and for human health and nutrition and for animal fodder. So we would like to see much stronger supply chains from the input providers who will be doing better and working with more farmers to the farmers who are doing better and being more prosperous, who are investing back into their soil and more prosperous soybean uh, added value products being developed, some locally by women's groups uh, and small scale enterprises, but also large scale enterprises uh, as the factories come online in the region. Then they learn to come to us and to ya. You can't come and can't deal with the yellow. Can't do it in Africa. Africa.